Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warhammer 2 Quake Match gameplay. This time around we are on the Castle Drakenoff playing as the forces of the Empire against the forces of the Dawi. And for this build I wanted to do sort of throwback uh, way back in the early days of my channel when I was first getting into multiplayer in Warhammer 1 where there was no unit restrictions on how many of a one specific unit you could bring. I used to occasionally run mass handgun builds against the Dowie, and these were incredibly scummy and very effective. But with the recent changes to the crossbows, giving them more AP, as well as increased non-AP damage uh, in exchange for reduced rate of fire, uh, I thought that, you know what, mass shooting might have a new, brand new niche against the dwarves. And so this build is really here to capitalize on the buffed crossbows or the reworked crossbows, as well as the implementation of Huntsman and some of the new Empire shenanigans. So, for my lord here, we are going to be running Baltasar Gelt. Not much to be said for him. He is a decent support caster. Main idea here is that I have Plague of Rust, which can help my crossbows be much more effective against armor. We also do have Glittering Robe, which will help my infantry counteract blasting charges, will help my gunnery squads soak up uh, enemy ranged fire if my opponent went heavy on quarrelers, or he's got some slayers trying to just overrun my troops, whatever it might be. Glittering Robe will help tank through it. We also do have Evasion. Honestly, a bad choice. I shouldn't have bothered with it, but oh well, forgot to take it off. Arcane Conduit and Cephalon, so we can spam magic all day, every day. Now, besides that, we do have, well, our Empire Captains. These guys got cheaper this last patch. Now, they're insanely cost effective. They're only 350 a pop, which is insanely cheap. Really, uh, are probably underpriced a bit. Uh, but the key here is that they can disrupt, they can run in, they can soak up some blasting charges and tie your opponent's infantry down. They'll out-trade most of the cheaper Dwarven infantry pretty effectively. Something like Miners, for example, doesn't really stand a chance. Alongside that, we do have a second Empire Captain. He's got to hold the line here, uh, providing a little bit of support, hopefully, to keep this front line in the fight just a tad longer. Now, the front line is simply here as a zoning tool. So we got three units of great swords. Not much to be said for them. They're great, great swords. They're very strong. Uh, honestly, they're kind of struggle in this matchup. Traditionally, this matchup is very bad for Empire because the Dwarves have Blasting Charges, which mess even Great Swords up, uh, and Great Swords struggling against things like Iron Breakers. Dwarves, of course, are very powerful against Cav, that sort of thing. So, a Great Swords is not the greatest unit in this match, but they're kind of your only AP anti-infantry unit, and so that's what we're rolling with to cr crush through any stragglers, to crush through slayers, that sort of thing. Alongside we do have the Sigmar Suns providing some additional chaff support. They are, of course, unbreakable, so they'll be a great anchor. And then we do have two units of Spearmen, Chevron up a little bit, to provide further support on the flanks. Now, way out wide, we do have two units of Huntsmen. These guys are there to suppress enemy artillery, to shut down bolt throwers, cannons, uh, grudge throwers, whatever it may be. These guys can generally sneak up close enough and then open a few volleys, take out an artillery crew relatively fast. Our gunnery line, five units of handguns, backed by four units of crossbows. These guys are, as you can see, spaghetti lined out, and just in case my opponent brought artillery, so they can so, sort of avoid getting deleted very, very quickly. Uh, but very powerful units, they can do a lot of damage, hopefully with Gelt's debuffs, with Plague of Rust, they can delete enemy infantry. And of course, guns with sheer quantity, because the Dowie player can't invest in too much firing, because they need protection against cavalry and steam tanks and that sort of thing, and they got to invest in those protective tools. Because of that, we're kind of gambling that he's not going to have enough shooting to outshoot me, and his infantry is not going to be able to catch me in melee. Now, for my opponent's build, he has decided to roll with Ungrim Iron Fist, and he is fully kitted out. In my opinion, not really worth it. Granted, he is cheaper nowadays. I believe all the Footlords got cost cuts, including Ungrim, so he is cheaper, but still. Uh, Red Ruin, Axodargo, definitely a bit overboard, in my opinion, but still. Ungrim, very potent combatant, and he is fairly quick at 32 speed. Uh, he can definitely get in, delete my Empire Captains, mess up the great swords, that sort of thing, and be a nasty menace. Alongside him, there is a Runesmith who is coming in with Rune of Wrath and Ruin, Rune of Negation. Forge Fire, interesting choice. Definitely wouldn't recommend it. I think it's a pretty weak item, but or ability, but uh, hopefully buffing some of the great, great weapon units my opponent brought. And then he does have the Hammer of Karak Draz, so a very strong debuff against melee troops. Unfortunately for my opponent, that's not really the main component of my army, but perhaps he can get some value against great swords. Now for the rest of the force, it is a mix of Dwarf Warriors as well as Longbeards in, in the front line. I do believe there was a unit of Dwarf Warriors somewhere in here. There we go. Uh, multiple units of Dwarf Warriors. Great weapons. We've got one in the back, three of them over. Or four of them, in fact, all over. We do have two units of Miners Blasting Charges providing that frontal support. Once again, looking to destroy signal units like Sigmar Suns, Great Swords, and whatnot before they ever get engaged. Signal unit of Thunders to provide some range zoning. Dragon Rack Slayer in the back. And then we do have a Bolt Thrower ready to chip away at any of my elites that I might have. Chip away at cavalry or heroes, lords, but it can even do some damage against infantry. It'll kill some great swords, you can see. There's also two units of gyrocopters, the new revamped broomstone guns with their bonus versus large. 
hovering around ready to be a pain in the rear. And uh, as you can see, it's forcing me to take my Huntsman and swing wide because one thing I do not want is to be prematurely spotted and then not be able to get in on my opponent's artillery crews. Because honestly, while Huntsmen will do amazingly well and they're very strong against Slayers, they're very good against Bolt Throwers, they're units like that, they are not something you want engaging against your opponent's um, you, against your opponent's gunfire, gunfire, and honestly, they're not great against brimstone guns, even though you would expect it, kind of, with the anti-large. The fact is, they're with their low projectile velocity. They tend to miss and whiff, and gyros will get staggered, and you kind of waste shots. But in the meantime here, this, this is definitely a bit of a misplay. Uh, this map, Dra Drakenhof, not the greatest map for this strategy that I'm running here, because you generally want a lot of spread with your troops. You want to be able to get a lot of width. My opponent here, because he's able to take advantage of this single rock, rock formation here, he's essentially able to seal off a flank, and it makes it very difficult for me to get a uh, surround. But I make a big misplay here. What I should have done is I should have held back with my shoot in my melee, just kept it back, and then started unloading on my opponent with the guns and the crossbows. What do I do instead? Being the bright lad I am, I decide to charge in with my melee. This is a big mistake. This is completely unnecessary. These guys could have easily just sat back and sat around with nothing. Uh, but, you know, what can you do? Plague of Rust does go down the long range from Balthazar Gelt. That's going to make them much flimsier and much easier to gun down. You can see gunfire already pouring in and doing quite a bit of damage. And uh, you can see more, more gunfire just pouring in. Now, then you guys see our sons here overwhelming my opponent. Camp Captain leading the way and providing his support, so very, very useful stuff. Unfortunately, over here, the Huntsmen are being forced to flee by some very angry Dawi warriors with great weapons. That said, my opponent on this flank is not in position to intercept, and he misses the fact that these Huntsmen are sneaking up on him. In the meantime, gunfire, arrow fire, all that, just overwhelming these troops. You can see the Lumbreers not lasting very long at all, despite the fact that they're just against Sigmar Sons and a Captain here. Unfortunately, big display here on my part, I let this Empire Captain get caught out, and it really should have run away with him. But instead, I'm allowing my opponent to get in with Ingram, Ingram pops all his buffs, and he's going to be crushing this Captain in the space of seconds. That said, over here, Great Sword's getting in, Glittering Rogue does go down, which is going to protect a lot of my troops here against the non-AP. And, you know, we're forcing a breach. Miners being forced to route. Great sort of performing a surround here. Now, a bit of a misplay here. I definitely, once again, I should have just been trying to get rid of the shooting first. That is really key with the strategy. You want to get rid of shooting, eradicate the projectile weapons, then do clean up an aisle nine with your infantry. Instead, I committed my infantry prematurely. So, bit of aggression, bit of a bit of stupid aggression there, hurting me bad. And in the meantime, the gyros are trying to get in here and disrupt my back lines because my opponent's desperate. They dive in, they send some gunners flying, and the gunners promptly pivot and begin to unload. So, these guys are going to be going down. Brimstone down, brimstone down. They are not going to be lasting very long at all. Let's see, Dwarf Warriors are just plastered with fire. Baltazar Gelt dives into melee. I'd actually earlier pulled him back to avoid the Voltador fire. Uh, and you can't see the guns just delete these gyros. They're going nowhere. They're getting destroyed, shot out of the air, and crashing to earth. Now, unfortunately, these Dragon Max Slayers do just plow through, and I didn't have great swords on standby. And this is why, this is, so this is why you want to be patient. You want to keep your infantry in reserve and force your opponent to sally out to try to deal with your shooting. Instead, I didn't do that. So now we're being pressured very heavily, Slayers in my back line, which is something you should never have happen if you're competent, but I'm not. And so now these great swords are trying to get in here and protect the back line. Over here in the mid-down, Baltus are getting, getting sniped at. You can't see that sort of crossfire come pulling in, but on the bright side, my opponent is not able to deal with the back line. You can't see the spears actually have flanked, and these archers, the huntsmen, deleting this bolt throw, just removing it from play. So very big win there for us, removing that backline pressure. And that's, once again, why you want to play the strat normally out a lot more patiently. Now, over here, the handgun's being overwhelmed by the Slayer, so things definitely looking grim. My opponent very aggressively pathing after me, dropping some bombs in my crossbow as well. And I realize things are looking very, very bad. Can see I'm dropping a Plague of Rust on the Gyros, making a little more bomb with the shooting. And, um, yeah, things are looking kind of grim. Gunners on the run here, trying to flee. Uh, the Gyros do not last long. Gets the crossfire, just getting shot out of the air. Just look at that poor Gyrocopter. Getting swatted out of the sky. And uh, this remaining friends here just trying to flee. And it, it's just not happening. It's <laughs> just arcing fire, pouring in from all sides. And, um, yeah, they're not having a good day. Another one, just look at that explosion. <laughs> Engine burning. And uh, poor guy is just going to come crashing down the earth. So... Yeah, Empire might not be able to create gyros, but we can sure swat them out of the skies, and that's what really matters. So the Dawi definitely not having a good time of it. Their Air Force essentially gone, and suddenly things are looking pretty bad. The crossbow is obviously being pressured pretty heavily. I'm realizing that I'm not able to save my line here, and I've actually lost the guns. I believe they shattered. So I realize things are bad. We're going to pop a Glittering Rogue. 60 armor is going to help. It's going to help the 90 Slayers. It's a lot of their damage output, because 80 armor on crossbow is much better than a mere 20. Uh, it's a huge win there. We're able to slow these Slayers down, buy ourselves some time, get the Great Swords in there. 
and start stalling over here. In the meantime, my opponent's on front line here, bogged down pretty badly. You can see the Huntsman here engaging with Thunders. Probably should have honestly thrown them into melee. Because while Huntsman will not win a melee fight with Thunders, they would just tie them down and it would be a much better, bigger win there. Uh, like this, they're going to lose anyway, so it's not going to be a win anyway. Cause the shield and armor on the Thunders, which make them insanely good in trade. Uh, over here, Spears are grinding down the Longbeards, though shockingly badly. It's taking them forever, despite the fact that it's like less than two dozen Longbeards. Uh, Huntsman over here, overrunning the back line, getting rid of these, these Dwarf Warriors, and now we are playing StarCraft 2. We are doing our Pro Marine splits here, using our Great Swords to wipe out the remainder of these Slayers. My opponent is pushing in with some great weapons, so what are we going to do? We're just going to run. You know, we don't need to, you don't need to take a fight with Zerglings, and uh, just if you don't need to take a fight with Zerglings, you don't need to take a fight with slow Dwarves with great weapons. You can just leave, and that's what we're going to do. So my great weapons here are, are going to, or my uh, guns are going to retreat, my great weapons are going to push in, block my opponent's shooting, block my opponent's melee, and yeah, we're going to gun them down. In the meantime, over here, he is trying to get these great weapons on me, but dwarves are too slow. Their stunty little legs can't carry him fast enough. And they are going to get hammered by a withering crossfire. You can see those guns just unloading on the flanks. Baltazar gets the flank charge, which is actually going to drop their leadership low enough to route. And yeah, not where they want to be in life, so they get deleted. Some brutal stuff here. They are completely routed. 1100 HP, and they are gone. I mean, in the meantime, my opponent's bolt throw has rallied in the back distance. Unfortunately, these huntsmen get into the fray on a big misplay here on my part. I wasn't trying to get them into melee. I was just trying to chase down some of my opponent's great weapons, and they weren't able to keep up. Uh, the Longbeards turn around. My opponent's with, with me with the Wrath and Ruin, and slows me down to the point that I can't escape. In the meantime, Dwarf Warriors over here getting deleted by that Wither and Crossfire, and that's really the brutal thing right now. My opponent doesn't have his Slayers anymore. Um... And he's just trying to catch a horde of infantry that's got over 30 speed with units that do not have that mobility at all. Now, unfortunately, these great swords here, they've got Ungram surrounded, and honestly, great swords probably will beat down Ungram in a straight up fight. Ungram's pretty terrible defensively. He's only got 40 melee defense, so once he gets good surrounded, he usually dies pretty bad. But all that fire from the guns is going to be enough to start breaking these guys off. I actually try to pull back here, trying to escape that thunder of fire, but it's not enough. Huntsman here compromised by the miners, and uh, yeah, I think life is life is bad. Uh, these huntsmen over here are going to escape though, and rally, be able to with. Uh, sort of melt those guys down. And in the meantime, my opponent's infantry here is run down and broken. So big wins, bounce power swing, decisively in my favor. Gelt over here chasing these bad boys off the field. That crossfire just deleting these poor guys. Just really doing some work. And uh, unfortunately, though, it's actually going to be a bit of a misplay. So due to some of our miscasts, we've actually got Gelt way low on HPB earlier. He was whittled down a little bit in melee. He was shot down by bolt throwers, yada, yada, yada. Things kind of crappy. But now, actually, I send a Gelt to, uh, I was sending him to sort of help rally the troops and clean things up. He's actually going to take start taking some friendly fire. So you're going to see that HP drop. His leadership drops to negative four, and Gelt's not able to stick around. His leadership breaks, and Gelt's not going to come back. So yeah, suddenly we've screwed ourselves over. Uh, I was so overzealous with getting rid of those Dawi warriors. Now we don't have the tools to keep my army in the fight. But uh, my opponent here trying to push in. But honestly, life is looking bad for him. I still have a unit of great swords coming back over here with 24 models. Second, you have spears here in the back with a grand total of 21. My captains are all dead and routed, but who really cares? These great swords over here are going to commit in on the runesmith. And now, the crossfire is just pulling in. And keep in mind, these crossbows, they still have ammo. We're still looking at 9 ammo on these crossbows, 8 on these guys. These guns have 10. My opponent is very, very down to his last legs. He's got a handful of thunders. He's got a tiny handful of dwarf warriors. He's trying to get into melee. Sigmar Suns here, down to 3 models, just pursuing as best they can. 2 models now, probably taking some friendly fire. Ungrim and the Runesmith trying to get in the fray here, and I'm just trying to overwhelm these these thunders, trying to knock them out of the, out of the uh, park, but uh, they're they're Retreat. refusing to run, so that's a little annoying. But you know, it is what it is. We're gonna start scattering to the to the four corners of the earth because I have no, no obligation to engage my opponent here. And uh, the Huntsmen, in the meantime, coming back, they've managed to eradicate the gunner the gun crews for the bolt thrower. They're able to search away these thunders. And uh, if we're able to whittle down these thunders, get rid of them, my opponent has nothing to really catch me. These gunners here are getting trapped, so this is not where they want to be in life. I'm doing surprising amounts of damage to Ungrim. Uh, they actually hit him there for like 14 damage, that was surprising. But we're just going to retreat. We're just going to scatter. Because once again, I'm under no obligation to fight. Uh, and, so, and so we're, we're, we're separating. It seems and it is definitely uh, must be frustrating for my opponent. We simply can't catch me. Longbeard's doing their best, you know. Uh, we're 40s doing their very best. And uh, yeah. It's not fun. Sigma, the Sigmar Suns here down the last model, fighting tooth and nail. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to start pulling those StarCraft splits. Uh, we're going to start pulling, you can see the guns pulling to the side here, the crossbows pulling back, and scattering. And my opponent doesn't have the troops. he's got four units left here, so he isn't really able to catch me because the Huntsman here whittling down the remainder of the miners. 
The Roosevelt here trying to get into melee, and he is just getting plastered. Guns are amazingly good at shutting down heroes trying to get in. His leadership buckles, drops down to the negatives, and he's in the full flight. These guns surprisingly routed to 50 more miles, so definitely a little frustrating. Obviously, losing the Vulture has hurt me a lot there. Uh, the remainder of the Dwarf Army here, though, not holding up too hot. Uh, we're actually going to scatter here. These guys are going to break, and that's going to cause the chain route that forces a full shatter. Now, Ungram is left, and he's going to launch a last charge into the guns, trying to get in. He decapitates or sends, sends one last uh, Imperial soldier flying there um, before he is going to be unceremoniously executed. You can see the firing squad already lined up there, ready to gun the poor guy down. These guns just lining up. They're ready to avenge their fallen kinsmen. And yeah, Ungrim is about to get executed in terrifying fashion. <laughs> poor guy. Just doesn't stand a chance. Charging in there with his mohawk. Just cue sad music. As the Slayer King does fall. I guess finding that glorious death in battle is certainly not in the style he was most likely hoping for. Just penetrated from all sides by lead shot from some of the Empire's finest. And um, that's going to be a perfect victory for the Empire. So, I mostly want to bring up this build because, well, it's abusive as all hell. It's some, it's doesn't really rely on any of the new units either. Um... Dwarves have traditionally been a disgusting matchup for Empire. It's arguably the worst. By, actually, I don't even think arguably. It just is the worst matchup for Empire by far. But um, with the recent changes to crossbows, with the implementation of Huntsmen, which uh, I don't know if they're actually that, that necessary in the build, but they, they definitely help with dealing with uh, enemy artillery. But um, it's opened up new ways for Empire to play this match. It's opened up... Um, it really lets Empire... Before you could do some gun-heavy builds, but it was still tough. Now you can go full-on maxing out on the guns. You can bring five units of crossbows, you can bring or four units of crossbows, five units of guns, bring Gelt for the armor sundering, bring two huntsmen. If I played this one better, I think my opponent would have lost this far worse. Uh, because fact of the matter is, if you play, if you play this smart, none of these units are actually, literally none of these, from the runesmith straight down to the longbeards, are a legitimate threat to this build. If you play your cards right. Now, I pushed my infantry in way soon, and I didn't have to do that. I could have easily just torn apart the miners, once the miners were gone, started tearing apart the great weapons, the longbeards, whatever. Do as I please. Murderize the rest of this army. Overwhelm the thunderers, most likely. Use my artillery, or my uh, our, my huntsman to knock out the uh, bolt thrower. Um, on a more open map, this is even more brutal because your opponent has uh, can't just defend a flank or lock down a flank with uh, a pillar and protect themselves that way. Or a rock pillar or whatever it be. A plateau. I'm not, not sure if it's a plateau or a pillar. Eh. I don't know. Either way, you can't protect your flank so easily. So it's actually even worse because you just get surrounded by a concave of guns and crossbows and you just get melted. Uh, gyrocopters are terrible against this because guns delete gyrocopters. Um, Thunder is sure they can trade well into like a single unit or two units maybe of crossbows, but there's this many of them. Even if your opponent goes much heavier on the shooting, um, they get overwhelmed. It's just too much firepower. You're looking at 11 units of shooting here. Um, and it's brutal. It's disgusting. It can it can do very not uh, very naughty, very terrible things to the Dawi, and um, yeah. There's honestly most of this build. Even Ungram isn't really much of a threat because Ungram is too slow to catch you, and you can bog him down on a single of great swords. So really, the main strategy, if you want to be successful with this build, in my opinion, is be much more patient than I was in this game. Spread out, um, with, melt your opponent's shooting and range. Get rid of the blasting charges. Get rid of the um, enemy gunnery. Get rid of their artillery. Get rid of their gyros, and then slaughter everything else at your leisure. And the Dawi can't do much about it. If they start chasing you with Slayers, if you're patient, you'll have a unit of Greatswords in reserve. Slayers don't do well against Greatswords. That's that. Um, so yeah, it's a brutal build. It's a pretty efficient build. Uh, definitely, if you're struggling in this matchup, I would recommend trying it out. It can be tough. If you're Dawi, what you can do is try to bring more heavy, bring more artillery and missile-heavy builds. Obviously, mass Slayer cheese could work, but the problem is... A lot of Empire builds that are going to face off against are very chaff heavy, and Slayers do not do well into that against like a horde of swordsmen and great swords. So I, I don't know. I don't like recommending a mass Slayer build because that is really gambling on the fact that your opponent goes with this specific build. And even then, it's not ideal because let's face it, you can't just go mass Slayers. You're going to bring something to supplement those Slayers, and those Slayers will still get bogged down on the great swords, on the spearmen, on the captains, on and they'll get overwhelmed by mass fire uh, from all the shooting. And what you're going to be left with is very little, and uh, you're going to get gunned down. So I think you want to try to bring a more shooting-heavy army. I think the gyros are just not that great in this match. I don't think the bolt throw is probably worth it. I think you should probably bring, like, a gobblobber, um, more more rangers or guns, uh, and try to outshoot your opponent, zone them away more, more effectively, but it's, it's a tough build to break. Um, but I just wanted to highlight it here, show it off that 
The, the Napoleonic War build is back. You got a huge mass amount of width you can bring and full 20 stack of Empire shooting. Just brutal stuff. Um, well played to Barlow here. Definitely unfortunate that he got the receiving end of this build. build but I hope you guys did enjoy. Hopefully you got some ideas on how what horrible things you can do to the poor Dawi. Um, as usual, feel free to leave your comments, critique, questions, all that down below, and I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. I do thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.